Hey, you doing? Justin here again. And in this lesson, I'm just going to be talking about some really basic things about setting up your guitar, common problems that people have, easy fixes, and things that you can and cannot fix by yourself. Now, the, the reason that I've kind of brought this into the beginner's lesson is we're gradually starting to move up the neck a little bit away from the open position. And even if you've got a thing called a high action, which I'm going to explain further in a second, it doesn't really affect you when you're playing down that end and you're working on the chords, but it does make a difference the further up the neck you get. So let me first of all explain what the action is and what you can do about it. So the action of a guitar is the distance between the string and the fingerboard. So we're just going to go to a really quick little close up now for a second, and I'll just show you exactly what I mean by the action. So the distance here, the amount that you can press the string down is referred to as the action. So exactly, you can get little measuring tools that measure from the, the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. Now, of course, if I just lift the, the string up a bit like that, you would have, maybe even higher than that, you might have a guitar that looks like that with a really high action, which would be too high and probably not very easy to play. If it's, the action is too low, when you play, it tends to buzz against the fret. So if it looks really low, you end up having a really buzzy sound, which is not good either. So if you've discovered that your acoustic guitar has a really, really high action, and you're having trouble playing further up the neck when it comes to doing your bar chords and your scales and stuff later on, you're playing up around the fifth fret or higher, what can you do about it? Well, on acoustic guitar, unfortunately, not very much but it does make a huge difference. And I really recommend taking a guitar to a guitar lutherer or a, a, your local guitar maintenance guy. Most music shops have a guitar kind of guru that works there and ask them to give you a set guitar setup. And sometimes it can seem kind of expensive, but it can make a huge difference to the playability of your guitar. In fact, one of the nicest guitars that I ever played as far as the feeling goes of the guitar was a 200 pound Epiphone Les, uh, an Epiphone Hummingbird acoustic guitar, which was a horrible guitar. It, was, it didn't play very well, it didn't seem to stay in tune. And I took it to this good guitar guru guy for a setup, and when it came back, it was really, really nice. It played really easy. It was just incredibly different, and it was only at that point did I realize quite how important a guitar setup can be. And since then, I make sure that all my guitars regularly go for a proper guitar setup with somebody who knows what they're doing. So. Acoustic guitars, definitely take them off to someone for a guitar setup. I'm sorry, I know that means forking out a bit more cash, but it will make a difference physically how easy it is to play your guitar, so that's important. However, for electric guitar, they're a little bit more adjustable, so I want to talk to you a little bit about how you might go about adjusting your electric guitar. So I'm just going to chuck my acoustic guitar back over here on the stand and grab up my trusty Stratocaster. Now, um, most electric guitars have a lower action than acoustic guitars, which is fine. Now, there's a couple of simple adjustments that you can make on an electric guitar yourself. There's a few things going on. The first thing that you can adjust is these parts here in the bridge of the guitar, the bridge saddles they're usually referred to as. And if you look really closely in the tops of them, you'll find there's a little hole that takes an Allen key. And by putting an Allen key in there, the very small one, and turning it around, it'll lift these pieces up and down. And of course, if you put them up, it'll mean that the string gets a little bit further away from the fingerboard. And if you put it, screw them back in, which is clockwise, then the little thing will go down and it'll make the action a little bit lower. Well, that's the kind of thing you can have a bit of a play about with yourself. Just trying to make sure that you don't get it. If you get it too low, it'll buzz too much and sound horrible. And if it gets too high, you won't be able to play it. So that's one thing that you can have a go at adjusting yourself on an electric guitar. The other thing that's really important uh, on an electric guitar that you can have a go at if you want, but I don't touch the, the, this myself, and even though I'm pretty experienced with guitar maintenance, I don't like touching the truss rod of a guitar. Now, a truss rod on a guitar is two metal poles that go right down the length of the guitar neck, and by turning a little uh, an Allen key, you can adjust whether the neck, if I'm looking at you like that, whether the headstock comes forward or whether it goes back. Now, on the Stratocaster, we've got a truss rod adjuster thing just right in the end of the headstock, but on different guitars, it's in different places. Usually, acoustic guitars have uh, 
truss rods as well. I definitely don't be touching a truss rods on an acoustic guitar. Get somebody professional who knows what they're doing to do that. Um, sometimes you have the truss rod adjuster on electric guitar in the inside of the neck just here. So what you might find is that you've got a really high action in this part of the guitar and a really low action here because the neck is kind of bent a little bit forward like that. So by adjusting the truss rod you can pull it back to the correct position and then you'll have an even action down the guitar neck. This is the kind of adjustment that you also need to do if you change string gauge. So if you go from a very light set of strings to a very heavy set of strings, it can be a really good idea to adjust your truss rod to bring your neck back into alignment. That can make a big difference. But again, a really good guitar tech will be able to do a, probably a far better setup than you. I've set up hundreds of, well, set up my same guitars hundreds of times over the last 20 years. And I still, when I take it to my guitar gurus, they always set it up loads better than I could have done. So I might tweak it a little bit myself when I get home if I notice all oh, that string's buzzing a bit or whatever. But generally, I take it to a guitar guru. Um, the guy that I use these days is called Charlie Chandler, and you can find him at Charlie Chandler's Guitar Experience in Q. He is a total guitar genius um, and does makes everything about guitars be better. So definitely look up Charlie if you uh, need to get some work done on a guitar and you live in London. Um, the other thing that's really obvious is the tremolo system. Now, if you've gone against my advice and bought what's called a locking tremolo system, a floating tremolo system on your guitar and you're a beginner, that's just generally a really, really bad idea. It's something that you shouldn't be doing. Um, what I recommend is having a, a regular tremolo system and fixing it so it's right down flat on the guitar. Now, what you'll find is that this bridge part can actually lift up, lift forward which is kind of cool. If you're playing like Jeff Beck guitar solos, you need to have this lifted up because when you put the tremolo arm, you can pull it up and make the notes go higher in pitch. But if you're a beginner guitar player, you're probably never going to be using that. I only just started mucking around with the tremolo arm a month ago. Right? And I've been doing this stuff for ages. So I would recommend pulling this bridge so it's back flat against the guitar that, would, that way your guitar will stay more in tune and it'll actually sound a little bit better as well. And the way that you do that on a Stratocaster guitar, so like a Gibson Les Paul doesn't have a tremolo system so you don't have to worry about it. But if I flip this over here, you'll see that there's a little base plate here, which is the back of the tremolo system and some springs. So if you want, I've angled my springs in, which makes them a little, it gives them a little bit more tension as well, but you can leave them square. You can add up to five springs in the back of a Stratocaster type guitar. And then there's two little screws here at the end. And if you just keep screwing them in and in and in and in, eventually you'll pull that bridge part, this part, so it's flat against the guitar. And that would be, I would recommend for a beginner guitar player, a really, really important thing to do is to fix your tremolo so you can't use it. You don't need to use it yet. Yeah, it's fun to grab it sometimes again, but it's not, you're not gonna probably use it in a very musical way if you're a beginner guitar player. So I would recommend bringing that down so it's nice and flat on the guitar. So that should tell you a little bit of stuff about guitar setups. Um, we've talked a little bit about, about the tremolo. We've talked about the action, which is the height of the strings. Um, you can also adjust the nut, which is the, the, the little kind of bone or plastic thing at the top. Again, I, I've never done that. I would recommend you getting a, a serious Lutherer to do that for you. Um, oh, one other very quick little thing, for uh, particularly for electric guitar players. Um, Often people's straps fall off their guitars. This is really, really heinous. If you can, buy yourself some locking nuts for your strap. It's very, very cheap to buy, well, very, very cheap, probably 15 pay, uh, British pounds, so like $25 or something like that. So that will be a good idea. Failing that, put your regular strap on and get a bit of plastic that goes over the top of your strap to lock the strap onto the guitar because what you really don't want is the strap falling off when you go to stand up and your guitar smashing on the floor. I've seen it happen to a student before and it's really not a very happy situation. So I hope that gives you a bit of a rundown on the guitar and uh, I'll see you for another lesson sometime real soon. Bye bye.